<laughs> all right, so when we last left off, let's see, we had gone through all of this over here, right? We finished yeah. this up? Okay. I'm a little lost on the Oh, that sucks for you. So, moving on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's a little lost in the idle spring. It's so, a good question. Thank you for bringing it up. The, this big old spring right there. So, the idle cutoff can that wedge slide underneath? Yes, this whole okay. thing, use this. This whole thing right here is connected to the mixture. So, there's a, they, we're missing some parts on here. So, when you pull the red knob in the airplane, you're literally pulling this thing backwards that way. It pivots right here. Yeah. So it, that's where it rotates. Pivot means rotate point. It doesn't rotate here. No, no. And it looks like it would. Then if this pushes right there, it's like, well, how does that? It, nothing makes sense. So when this goes up, it pushes on this. This is going to come up. But I think I already said that, and that confused you? Yeah, I just, I, I don't understand how, like, when you say it goes up. This right here yeah. goes this way. Because this pushed it up. No, okay, no, I understand that. Got that? Well, when this whole thing goes up, what's going to happen in this area? It tends to pull it backwards. So, the way you're saying it's, it's moving, like, this is the, the diaphragm, so it's moving this way, like pulling it in. If you grab this and pull it like this, yeah. what happens? So it's going to. Gonna compress. And what happens here? The, the pop the Ta-da! <laughs> Shut off the fuel, right? Yeah. Okay. There are different styles of this carburetor. So they, just like with the, Mar the Marvel Shoveler MA3s, there's the MA3 PA, SPA. Some have accelerator pumps, some don't. So this carburetor is very much the same way. We do have a cutaway in the shop that you'll look at. It is a little different than this one, but the information is all there. So fuel eventually makes it from D past the metering jet C and moves over to the left side of the carburetor through here. And now we get over here. Well, remember the uh, idle spring created a problem for us, right? What, yeah. was, my, what was my problem with the idle no, spring? The range. Yeah, it's not very helpful. So fuel is going to come over to here, and it's going to go to the idle needle valve. There are a couple of styles of this idle needle valve. Is one of the things I want. Um, this. Let's see if we can find it. There we go. So it looks more like this right there. Put it right here. There we go. Let's see if we can kind of bring it up so you can kind of see them both together, possibly. So you can see how this right here is the same as this right here. Match it all up, and now we can see an exploded version of that right there. You can see that it actually has a stepped needle system. So what that means is. As you can see, that at the initial idle, low idle, barely idling, you know, 550, 650, it's going to be in this area right here. Just barely enough fuel to get through the needle. I know it's kind of hard. It's like, well, how does that actually work? But enough just barely to get through. Then as you advance the throttle more, it is going to move this, opening it up into this section right here. Fast idle. Yes, in a way, but yes. The answer is, short answer is yes. Then eventually, we're going to be in here, our cruise power setting. Wait, what? Hold on. That's you, this you, needle. You, just, you seem like you skipped over a second. So you, that, that arm advances. I'm going to talk more about this right here in a minute. I'm just saying, the, so for now, you can just say, oh, yeah, this is connected to the throttle. It is, just in a different way. So low idle. Fast idle, 65% power, 
wide open throttle. Where, where is that on the comment again? Right here. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So, what controls the fuel at idle? The combination idle and power enrichment jet. Why do they call it power enrichment jet? What's right there? Nothing is there. So that means this is wide open now. There's the economizer. So at 65% power, it economizes. So yeah, it does. Okay, cool. All right. So looking back up here at this, fuel comes around. We have the idle needle power enrichment that is combination that's going to go through this way. So how is that operated? Well, number one, fuel pressure. There's a diaphragm pushes to help open it a little bit. And what do we have here? Vacuum, which is going to pull on that a little bit. So that is going to have a certain amount of adjustment here. But this is connected to the uh, throttle. So that positions, and I don't want you to get too hung up on this because I'm not going to like go crazy on this, but that positions where this is. And so that puts a stop to how far all this can go. So it's like it'll move a little bit and say, you can go this far, provided you have enough fuel pressure and suction to overcome the spring. Then you can open a little bit more and so think about it this way. If I just had the, uh, this right here connected directly to this right here, and I move that needle in and out all on its own, it could kind of mess things up because this over here is a little bit slow. It's too sluggish, right? So let's think we got to get things in equilibrium. We got to get the right fuel pressure into C. We got to increase the fuel pressure in C before this all opens up. So we open the throttle. We're going to get some venturi suction that's going to create suction here start to move that that way that increased air metering force air metering force let me start so again it looks like it's maybe providing the resistance to the diaphragm is what Kyle was saying. yeah yep as very good adds resistance to the diaphragm so open the throttle first thing is that moves over throttle plate opens up vacuum goes up so now we get a little more vacuum air metering force went uh -oh. up that caused the pop it to open. Pop it open, caused more fuel and unmetered, then it caused more pressure in the metered. Because there's no equilibrium. I mean, it's equilibrium in A, B, and D, but C <laughs> pressure just goes up, right? right? Just goes up. That's supposed to. So C pressure goes up, moves this open more, more fuel pushes the spring a little bit more that way. It opens up. Follow? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do the same thing backwards. Close it, pushes pressure on the spring starts to close this, um, that closed the throttle, throttle closed, we have a decrease in air metering force, pop it closes, less pressure in C, on and on, got it? Okay, the thing I think I would want you to remember just in this area more than anything is it's an idle, it's a manually controlled valve with some fine tune adjustments between some pressures and a spring, follow? Say okay. manually controlled valve, that is stepped. And when you get into the reading of this, you'll see not all of them are stepped. Some of them have a different system, slightly different. Uh, okay, has an accelerating pump, which I think is kind of cool, but we'll get to that in a minute. So fuel comes up this way, goes off to the accelerating pump, which we'll talk to in a minute, comes up into here. Here's my discharge nozzle. Well, actually, discharge nozzle's here. I keep calling that discharge nozzle. Needle valve is the correct word for that. So this is going to open when fuel pressure plus suction, suction overcomes spring pressure to open this up. And once that opens up, we get fuel is going to come through here. Hits this point is mixed with air, air from the impact and out the discharge nozzle. So when we increase the throttle, we have an increase in venturi pressure which is going to pull it that way. And we have an increase in pressure here. It will open it up more and a lot more fuel to go. All right. Okay. Accelerating pump. Under normal operations, we have pink and pink. So that is 
So let's think about right now with this throttle valve closed, what would be up here? Vacuum. Vacuum. So if I had a vacuum here and I have some fuel pressure, it actually comes up. Let me think. I don't like this drawing. There's a little yeah, hole right there. Yeah. It's going to come through. There's a poppet. Oops, <coughs> sorry. It'd come through here. Go through this little area. Pressurize this. So I pressure there. Suction here. Moving the diaphragm the left. to the left, overcoming the spring pressure. All right. I open up the throttle. Whoosh. Real fast. What happens to my vacuum? Atmosphere. Now it becomes pressure. We've lost the vacuum. So the pressure plus spring is going to push the diaphragm to the right, to the right causing a buildup in pressure in here. It can't get through here, but there's a, a one-way check valve there with the spring. It's going to blow this open and enter this way and out. Oh, shit, out this way. Out that way. Follow? Okay. I know it looks like it's like maybe captive in there. It's not. Just think of there's like little holes all around or it's just half of it. And it comes out this way and that way. And then that goes up. We have extra pressure. Going to open this up. Pressure goes that way. More fuel momentarily until such time as that fuel is exhausted in here. Once that fuel is exhausted, well, you got nothing until you reload it. How do you reload it? Go back to idle. Create a vacuum here. Pull that back. Fuel comes in here. Reloads it. Questions? Because that's all there is to it. All right. Let me see. What did I put here? Automatic mixture control? Oh, yeah. Automatic mixture control. Let's see. Oh, that's a different style of power enrichment jet. Let me see. Automatic mixture control. Um, I think that's just the same thing. Let me see. Okay, that, we don't need that. Some variations on this model. This is the same thing as, oh yeah, I did that in the video. It actually was pretty cool. This right here, do you remember which one did I use in the video? The colored one or the black and white? Some of them have this airflow power enrichment jet right there. What's that? Did I? All right. I didn't do too bad. Okay. And so what happens is under normal operation, we have fuel coming up here into this spot and also coming up in here into this spot. And so normal operation, fuel coming up through here, main metering jet, actually it comes through here, there, like that. <laughs> uh, main metering jet out. Well, what do we want? We want power enrichment. So what does that mean? Power. More fuel at max power. So, if I have, sorry, this is bugging me. It gives me a little cross. I don't want the little cross. Oh, it's just the regular thing. There we go. All right, so we have fuel coming up in here, and it's just going to park itself right here. And we have a spring and a diaphragm and a needle that is closed. So when the pressure in here builds up, C builds up enough, it is going to open this up, overcoming spring pressure, allowing fuel to come in this way, and we'll have a second path out. So it's C or D? C. It's all C. C Maybe the colored one would have been better. Here's the metering jet, main metering jet. So fuel is coming up this way yeah. and this way, filling up this chamber right here. Was it C metered fuel then? C is metered. Well, this is not. This is D. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what you said. Yeah, yes, so we have D right there. Yeah. D. It says right there too. Metered fuel. 
on meter fuel. Well, maybe I should use this book right here. Um, oh yeah, with Venturi suction helping pull this back. So when Venturi suction plus unmetered fuel overcome the spring, this will open, which would be what, what power setting would that be? High power. High power settings. This is going to let fuel come out through here, enter into C. Pressure in C is going to go up and off to the other side with high pressure C. High pressure C is going to open up um, the discharge needle more and more fuel is going to go out. See, remember, it's very different than the first one we looked at, where everything is, oh, we always look in equilibrium, this goes up, that's got to, it doesn't work that way with this one. And you're saying with this, it has a different needle for the fuel? Uh, There's the a line. secondary needle, is it, yeah, this system then has a different needle on it, because this is your power enrichment. Follow? So that needle's going to look a little different. That one that had the steps, all the steps, will look a little different if it has this one. See, options. If you have this system, what's different about it? Everybody awake? <laughs> You're gonna have a different needle. needle. Where's that needle? On the, side. on the other side. So if you have this system, then this needle looks a little different. It doesn't have the steps in it. it doesn't have all those steps in it. I think it just cut off right there because you don't need the uh, cruise step in there, the economizer. The other system's going to handle it. And, oh, we wanted to cover the... Nope. Oh, well, I'm there. I was talking about... It gets more complicated because, and we're not going to get into this, but the manual mixture control valve plate positions, you have full rich, auto rich, auto lean, idle cutoff. But if you look at it real carefully, you can see it has all the little holes in it. What does that remind you of? Stromberg. Stromberg. So, same thing. Um, we just simplified it, which is good. Um, okay. So, we can do the same thing that we saw with the PR58 with an automatic mixture control. So, if you can see that it's just put over here in the side. So, fuel is going to come in here. Here's that big spring. Um, I believe it's just rotated. Ours doesn't look like this. Ours looks very different. Uh, but, hopefully, you can just kind of get the picture in your head that all they're doing with this is putting an automatic mixture bleed between A and B. Just like it was on the big carburetor. Right. Same thing. It's just in a slightly different position, but not by much. And so all you're going to do is take A and B and bleed them together. So if you want the automatic mixture to do something, you just bleed A to B, which is the same thing our manual one did, right? It seems okay. like to be the running trend. It's the way it works. So it, the big one, PR58, is the same. The manual mixture control on the PS5 we're looking at is the same. Then we can just add an automatic mixture control. It does the same thing. It bleeds air from the pressure side uh, to the suction side, lowering what? Air lowering air metering force, calibrated leak. This uses an inverted needle. So it's pointy up here and not pointy down here. And so we have uh, a bellows, which is full of an inert gas. Potato chip bag. So as we go up in altitude, this will expand. expand. And as that expands, this needle then drops down. And so this little space right here opens up because it gets in the skinny part of the needle. And you can just see right here, air pressure A, which was pressure, is in this one, is allowed to bleed off into here into the suction, lowering the air metering force. That's all. Okay. I think that's all my pictures. All right, get your pens out. Yes. I know. Well, I could just be done. <laughs> Test tomorrow. <laughs> we can watch Wally for the last 15 minutes. No, we can't. That would be wasting your time. You'd be like, why not I just go home?
Pressure carbs. When they say carbs are bad for you, they don't mean this one. I don't know. You ever tried to eat a pressure carb? If I did, I wouldn't admit it. The question is, anybody tried to make me eat a pressure carb? <laughs> All right, advantages. Less prone. Do you want the lights on? Because I have to see my paper. Ooh, that's much better. Less prone to ice, uh, especially throttle ice. Just realized uh, since tomorrow's Thursday, which means I got to be done tomorrow. Since the discharge nozzle is after the Venturi. And throttle. Uh, gravity and inertia have little effect. <laughs> Uh, some of these are silly. They copy out. Fuel is automatically metered at all engine speeds and loads. Yeah, well, so is a carburetor, right? So I don't have to do that. Um, I like this one, though. Uh, oops, we'll make it a C then since it's left now. Atomizing. Atomizing fuel under pressure results in smoother engine. Atomizing fuel under pressure results in smoother engine. I don't know about that. Yeah. I feel my engine on my airplane is pretty freaking smooth. And um, the uh, Bonanza we have here has a PS5 on it, but it also runs very smooth. Um, better economy. I don't know why they think that, um, but definitely this one, protection against vapor lock. Why is that? Because pressurized. pressurized all the way through. Um, basic operating principle. Carburetor senses mass airflow to regulate the fuel pressure to a metering system. Regulate the fuel pressure to a metering system. Now, when I see the words mass airflow, and you read some of this stuff, the, I don't want to say hint, or the, 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 what they're trying to convey is that this carburetor, unlike a regular carburetor, a float carburetor, I should say, um, the Venturi doesn't really sense weight of fuel or air, right? doesn't sense the, the weight. And so as you go up in altitude, it definitely runs richer and richer and richer. And with this particular one, there is verbiage that suggests and mass airflow means that, that because you're using a Venturi and a uh, impact tube, that it does sense the weight of the air as opposed to a float carburetor. But at the same time, it definitely has, still has an automatic mixture control and a mixture control, which tells me not necessarily does it do that. But like on your cars, you have a thing called a mass airflow sensor, which that senses the weight of the air, right? In a sense, yes. I'm saying, in a sense, yes. So, thank you. 
And what I know about mass airflow sensors is if you buy a K&N air filter and you put a lot of oil on your filters, it will get on that mass airflow sensor, and then you get to buy a new mass airflow sensor. So sensitive. Uh-huh. It's a hot wire. And they're very expensive. <laughs> There's just a spray step on them. They're like, oh, I ruined the ones in my, my, my sedan, my car. Oh, man, I was so mad. I knew exactly what I did, too. And from experience, and I told the Mercedes dealer, I'm like, I, I was under warranty. I'm like, yeah, I know what's wrong with it. Yeah, <laughs> that, was my, that was my problem. There's your problem. Um, the fuel is not open. The fuel is not open to the atmosphere. Open to atmosphere. Like a float carb. Fuel's under pressure the whole way. So what does green mean on your vest? It means you're happy or? Uh, low. You're running low? <laughs> green means low. <laughs> of course green it. means the economy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Cooper's blue over here, so what does that mean? The blue is medium, obviously. Oh, God, what is a blue tag? Controls fuel to engine. By sensing two forces. What are those two forces in the PR58? Air, air metering force. Air metering force. Actually, it's both of them. Air metering force and fuel metering force. What's the air metering force in the PR58? A plus B. What's fuel metering force in the uh, PS5? D. Air metering force oh, in the PS5. A plus B. A plus B. PR58 is the big one. The PS5 is the little one. What is the fuel metering force in the PR58? What is the fuel metering force in the PS5? D. There we go. All right. Um, this is like page after page after page of me writing down what happens with air metering force and fuel metering force. I don't, I honestly just don't want to write it all out because it's, yeah, and I used a simplified operation. Let me just go over through it. So. see here. We'll do this. Air metering force. Air metering force is chamber A, which is Pressure from what? Impact tube it is a positive pressure that tends to open or close pop it valve. Open, open pop it. Um, chamber B is what? Suction pressure. pressure. All right, we'll call it suction from what? So that is a negative pressure. Tends to open, open, open poppet valve or assist A is fine. Uh, we have an idle spring. What does the idle spring do? Allow the poppet valve to be open slightly. Okay, so idle spring. Uh, what do I say? 
at idle, there is insufficient AMF air metering force. So a spring is added to hold fuel pop it, I'll pop it off its seat. As I'm going through these notes, I think you should be picturing the bigger one, the PR58. I think most of these are more geared towards that. Uh, pop it off its seat enough to get idle fuel. And I think I already said air metering force, AMF equals A plus B. Then we have fuel metering force. So we have chamber C. What is chambered C? Metered fuel. Metered fuel. Why is it metered fuel? Because it's been through the Right. So in the PR58, so PR58 to be clear, um, let's see, metered fuel pressure is, is a positive pressure. That what? Helps. Helps to open. Helps to open. Okay. I'm going to say works against. D. Works against D. In order to open the pop. Okay. Open pop it. Oh, that was, he's taking his tools out. This held constant throughout range of operation. What holds it constant? The discharge nozzle. Operation by discharge nozzle. Chamber D, delta, that is called? Unmetered fuel. Unmetered fuel is a positive pressure that tends to? Close the pop. Tends to close the poppet. Um, so fuel metering force in the PR58 is D minus C, and the fuel metering force in the PS5 is D. D. Minus? All right. Um, all right, let's call it there.